Hello there, how you doing? Um, I'm back in my iron farm world today. Since doing the tutorial on the single chunk quad iron farm, I've had a few requests to do a tutorial on the individual modules. So I thought, yeah, why not get that done today? While each farm is technically a single chunk farm, you will need an 18 by 18 area as the stairs on the side extend the build out by one block in each direction. So to start off, you find a corner and then you build up by four. And this will be the starting point for your first platform. From here, you want to build out a 16 by 16 platform. Okay, from there, you want to build your next platform. You take a corner again, you count up five, one, five, of those, and then do the same again. Build out a 16 by 16 platform. that's done you should have two platforms that look a little bit like this next you want to take your stairs there's a temporary one there and then start building from there what you want to do is put a ring all the way around this platform Once that's done, you need to choose which side to place the villagers on. Uh, I'm just going to use this side. What you do, you come from to the corner of the platform. You miss two, knock out four, miss one, knock out two, miss one, knock out four, and then you should have two at the end. Come on down, that should be nice and symmetrical. And now that you've got the front, the left and right side, are going to be for the doors you come back over and you miss two and then knock out 12 and you should have two at the end do the same for the other side like so from there you want to come underneath and place a block between all of the openings that you've just placed and then connect them all up with a row of slabs like so and then do the same for the, the sides So back around the front, that piece in the middle is where the villagers are going to go and we need to block it off a little bit more so that they don't escape. So come up to it and place two blocks and then two slabs and that should create a small gap and then come onto the inside and just place two slabs there and that'll just keep in any babies. So next, uh, we can place the doors in. So you just come to the wherever there's a slab, and you just place all your doors in. Way along, and either side of the villager pod as well. So not in the center piece there. Right as well. Next you can take your trap doors and place them on either side of the villager pod. 
like so. That's just for easy access to the villagers. So you can drop them in nicely or even feed them if they need to be fed. So next we can place the water in. Now in survival this might be a little bit cumbersome because we're waterlogging stairs rather than just filling water sources around the edge which means you can't keep creating infinite water sources so you'd have to set up something close by so you can keep getting buckets of water um anyway there's a, a pattern to it so you ignore the corner there it's shaped that ignore that one skip two and then waterlog five three and then skip two, and then waterlog five. One, two, five. And you should have two at the corner, one left. So I'll just show you again, and then I'll time lapse it a bit. So ignore the corner shape. Skip two, waterlog five. One, five. Skip two, waterlog five. One, two three five and you can see it's starting to make a shape center so once you've waterlogged all the stairs on both platforms we can place in the magic water on the corners. Uh, we do place a block on either side of the corner there. And then place a water source between the two of them. And then you can break these away and the water just stays there. Uh, like I said, magic. So what you want to do is do that for all four corners on both platforms. Once that's done, all the water is complete, so you can come back out. And if we look in the center, you can see that it, it leaves a plus shape. Now, you can go ahead and break that out. This is the best sort of shape for efficiency, as the iron golems won't get stuck. So they won't be there just like fighting each other to get through a small gap. They've all got plenty of room. So now's the time to create the killing chamber. So pop underneath and on the back edge of the hole we've just made, place your glass and then you place two more either side. And then you want to extend these end pieces out another seven blocks. One, two. Down the other side. One, five, seven. Then you can bring these down to the floor. With these edges, you want to bring them one short of there. So you bring it there to like that. And then across the front, level with the end piece of glass, and break out the dirt. And then do two more like that. So it's almost like a T shape. Get like that. You place your chest in there. And then two hoppers going into the chest. And then an upper either side going into the other hoppers. Like so. Next, 
um, take out your glass panes and what we want to do is connect up these two walls so across the top like so and then two rows of glass panes across the hoppers and then you want to take out some signs and we'll be placing them right there which is a one block space between that pane sign uh, because in a minute we'll be placing the lava in there and then you want to crouch in place more signs like so, four in total and then we can fill this side the water source here and then break on through and patch it back up and then you take your lava and you can place it in between the signs and the glass panes like so and the signs won't burn and um, they used to in older versions of Bedrock Edition uh, but they no longer burn so they'll be perfectly fine like that and then the final step is to actually get the villages in so what I do is block off those water sources there and then I can fit and then in survival you'd be able to a mine cart them up and drop them into the gap no issues at all uh, but I'm on creative so I've got one of these TT eggs and then if you wanted to you could just put the two in and then breed them up because babies won't be able to escape but just for simplicity's sake I'm just going to throw a load in and then we can close the trap doors again and remove those blocks so now the farm's complete I just wanted to talk you through a couple of things so the original concept was by Groover Guy um, but that design sort of got broken a little bit in the update aquatic so I'll fix those issues um, I've also improved efficiency quite a bit uh, firstly by having this configuration here uh, as I mentioned earlier this prevents golems from getting stuck trying to fall down the hole when you get two or more bumping into each other uh, also these stairs these kind of prevent the iron golems from falling over the edge um, I've been using this farm for months now of this design and I've never had a single iron golem fall off the side even when it was dry um, a couple of times I've accidentally completed the farm and forgot the water on one or both of the platforms and iron golem started spawning when it was completely dry and they'd walk up to the stairs and they'd do that silly mob thing where they quickly turn around and go back the other way as if they're scared of heights or something, I don't know. And finally, I've configured the farm so that it takes advantages of the various works with village mechanics in the Bedrock Edition. So you can easily stack these up to create a quad iron farm, like so. And all you have to do is just rotate the design. But I'd explain all that in my previous video. So I'll link to that as well. Or a card. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. And if you did then please do leave a like. And if you want to see more from me. Then please do subscribe. I've been DB8035. Thanks for watching. And goodbye.